It can be challenging, but get the artist to sit down. And, um, I think this is, Robin will explain more about format, but I think this is mostly going to be a conversation tonight. Um, I'm Peter, uh, and I want to welcome you to the Eastside Freedom Library. Uh, logistics, so there are restrooms downstairs. Um, we also have a really great long photography exhibit downstairs that I encourage you to look at before you go. Uh, Jim Vu and Sai Tao from In Progress on the concept of what does it mean to be long, um, particularly among the other generation. Um, we have a guest book. My colleague Clarence is holding the guest book and uh, we urge you to sign the guest book and give us your email so we can keep you posted about other activities that are going on here. Um, many of you, I think, are here for the first time and we've been here about five and a half years focusing on the intersections of immigration, labor, and social justice histories, and particularly their histories here on the east side. Um, and that we firmly believe that art is a great vehicle to get people to share their stories um, in different forms and formats and share their experiences uh, with each other. So particularly for the artists who are here, I want to invite you to imagine what you might want to do here after you're done doing this thing for, for the Ramsey County Courthouse, but think about things that you might do here. And I'll give my warning, my colleague Carla Reilly is Facebook live streaming this, and so that if you're in the witness protection program, you want to make sure um, you're out of the line of sight uh, of the camera. So thank you all for coming in on this cold night, and Robin, do you want to, or Chad? We were going to do introductions at this point, um, so what, let's just do that. Uh, let's have the, the panel from the community that helped select the artists stand up, please. And just introduce yourselves. Sure, I'll go, I'll go first. I am Olivia Mulvey Morawicki. And Bob Parker. I am Betsy Maury Moss. And I'm Marilyn Burnett. Um, I'm supposed to introduce myself. I'm Chad Roberts. I'm president of the Ramsey County Historical Society. Um, we've got Robin Priestley here, also from the Historical Society. And I'd like to point out Commissioner Jim McDonough is here as well. Um, so, and then do we want to have the artists stand up and introduce themselves quickly? You'll get a chance to talk again about your work. Okay, very good. My name is Samara Cunyum. My name is Kalex Herrera. Marina Castillo. Emily Donovan. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to use the microphone now, so I'll do that. I didn't miss anybody, did I, Robin? Yes. Keeping it simple tonight. It is going to be a conversation, so we'll be able to jump into that pretty quickly here. I just wanted to provide a little background on the project. Uh, this started quite a while ago. Uh, the City Council and Ranch County Commissioners got together and said, you know, we want to do something about this artwork. And he said, sure, it's 80-some years old and not reflective of the community, and we should do something about that. And so discussion ranged from the nuclear option at both ends, completely removing them or ignoring them. And the decision was made to choose something along the middle roads to hopefully spark conversation in the community, uh, add artwork to the space that's a public working space uh, that is more inclusive, that does represent more of what this community is and what makes it great. And so that decision was made. They asked the Ramsey County Historical Society to help lead this process, and we convened a task force of community members that uh, looked at the requirements, looked at the call for artists, and helped select the artists. Uh, and the artists were hired about a month ago now, and have been busily working at different speeds. Uh, you'll hear from them all tonight, one way or another. Not everybody could be here in person. Uh, from here, the artists keep doing their work, and we keep working on the background. Context panels, the technical stuff about how we want the art, all those things that are going to help make this a success. So but the most important part, though, is the artists. So uh, before we get to that, though, 
Is there anything, Commissioner McDonough, that you wanted to add? Uh, I, just, I want to thank the folks that were on the panel. Um, it's been a long process to get here. I want to thank all the artists that put themselves forward with your vision for what that can be and what that can mean for the people in our community and thanks to the community members that have been engaged in, in watching us. Ramsey County owns the building jointly with St. Paul, but Ramsey County manages the building. We hold our board meetings in there. The St. Paul City Council holds their city council meetings in there. So that our work is important and how it reflects not only the work we do officially as governing boards for this for our community, but for the people that come into that environment to be able to feel welcome and feel a part of that. And certainly the artwork that was done 80 years ago doesn't reflect that for all everybody in our community. So I appreciate everybody and their effort here in helping us move this project forward. And thanks, Chad, to the Historical Society to take the lead on this. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to do so, so far. And we anticipate it continuing to be. Uh, Clarence, is it going to be necessary for people to speak into the microphone for the Facebook Live thing, or can we just talk? Because it's a really small group. Can we pass, around, can we pass the mic around? As far as or I'm concerned, yes. I can also rig something up. Well, why don't we have the why don't we have the artists come up and talk about their work and try and use the microphone? We're trying to broadcast this and save it for press areas. So, um, why don't we? Do we want to start with Adam Swanson's video? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Adam Swanson was not able to be here today. I was going to tell you a little bit about himself, but he did think, hey, I can send a video. He said, that sounds great. So here you go. Adam Swanson. Hello, my name is Adam Swanson, and I'm honored and excited to be one of the artists chosen to respond to the John Norton murals at St. Paul City Courthouses. I grew up in Ramsey County and visit often to see my uh, sisters and family, so I feel very close to the area. Uh, though now I live in Cloquet, Minnesota, I live in a log home in the woods, uh, I'm married and the father of two. I paint full time, I um, don't wait for the muse to strike, I work uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and occasionally on weekends, of course. Um, I'm, my intent uh, for this project is to respond to the industrial themed mural. My plan is to keep the same format as the original um, pieces, but replace the content. I hope to have an indigenous person standing in the foreground wearing the gear of an electrician. Uh, beneath this figure will be people working on sustainable energy solutions. Wind turbines will turn on the horizon, solar panels will glint in the sun, and the Mississippi River will wind its way uh, through these themes. I've recently been into books uh, such as the Winona Ladue Chronicles and the Death and Life of the Great Lakes among others, and I was inspired by the people during my stay at the Standing Rock protests at Sacred Stone Camp. People from all tribes banded together in a way to protest our dependence on oil in a unified way. I am not a tribal member, but I live on the Fond du Lac Reservation, and my home borders the Enbridge Line 3 Pipeline Corridor. I walk there with my kids and dogs often. I have been able to meet and talk with many of our local protesters. As a volunteer firefighter in this area, I've seen some amount of the complexity of these protests, and I realize there's no silver bullet answer to our oil addiction. I like to think about replacing the content with something more current, the kind of person I see as a leader, depicting industries that will help us thrive in a society we have built. Instead of using industry in order to build and grow at any cost, I want to focus on using it to move forward in a sustainable way, including all people. Showing people doing insightful, innovative work in order to create a healthy, inclusive future is a way to use symbols to respond to the oppression and limited vision of industry represented in these original paintings. Uh, once again, I'd like to say thank you very much for this uh, exciting uh, opportunity to respond to these murals, and um, I'm very sorry that I couldn't be there today. We had a family trip that was planned ages ago, and I just I just couldn't get up it. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to make this video and, and share a little bit about myself. And I really look forward to starting painting. So thank you. So, Hello, my name is Adam Swanson, and I'm honored and excited. That was better lip syncer. That could have been fun. <laughs> uh, no, um, what, uh, <clears throat> what Adam doesn't tell you is he's traveled all over the world doing art, including Antarctica. And he's really got an interesting style, and I think what we're going to see out of him is really going to be something. And it might be the closest thing to what is currently existing, providing a nice 
commentary and touch point for people that are first experiencing this in the space. So we're looking forward to seeing what that looks like. Um, I think now, now we can't answer any questions, right? Uh, when we have the other artists up here, we're going to do some Q&A at the end. Robin, do we care if people jump in? It's a small group. Okay, so feel free to pepper them with questions as they're doing their thing. Haha, ha, sorry guys. <laughs> no, um, but we also will be doing another one of these in a couple of months, <coughs> is the plan. So it'll be another opportunity for people to see them as they're further along with their work. So, Marilyn, would you mind? Emily. Yes. Emily. Emily? I read the wrong name, I'm sorry. Emily Donovan, please come up. I do that. I need a list of names when I'm in public or I'll forget my own, so. <clears throat> All right, so I'm Emily Donovan, I'm a uh, St. Paul resident, and I have a studio in Minneapolis. And I have been working with natural pigments and dyes for about five years. I have a background um, in fine arts, painting and printmaking, um, but I'm always interested in using something like Adam that's sustainable, something that's connected with nature, and um, I'm very honored and happy and excited to be part of this project as well and um, when I think about St. Paul and Ramsey County what I find inspirational to me or interesting which is coupled with my process are all the community and urban gardens that people create and I think it's a wonderful reflection of all the different communities that um, both immigrant and local populations and how people are bridging together and growing things and making um, food for their families um, as another sustain sustainable source um, to feed everyone. So I'll, my piece that um, I'm working on will be using natural pigments and dyes, um, some that are foraged locally, although this time of year is a little more difficult, but I've saved quite a bit, and then some other resources that will um, tie into the um, different cultures and populations that live within Ramsey County. So I wanted to include um, native sources um, like sumac and um, buckthorn, things that people don't really love, as well as indigo and cochineal, um, henna, and all of these kind of bridge to different populations, which is really interesting to me. Um, every cultural, cultural, cult, this is wonderful with this, culture throughout the world, they all have a connection with natural dyes and pigments, and I think that's a really um, wonderful bridge as well. So with my community garden idea, it's kind of hard to ignore kind of how Adam was working with that original panels when you see them, they're so big and bright and colorful. So I too um, will incorporate um, figural work um, as, as gardeners. Um, they're not going to be a specific person or um, just male, female, children, all within a group that's kind of unified. And then I also wanted to incorporate some of the original architecture of the space, of the council chambers with um, the art deco motifs that they have running throughout the woodwork. <coughs> Instead of using that, um, those kind of angular original 30s motifs, I want to incorporate um, specific cultural and um, that reference like the Hmong population and their um, storyboards and some of the motifs they use or East African and Somali populations and some of the designs they use with henna um, and then also some Native American and I think bridging all these together and looking at a garden and how we've all been growing on this earth um, together we can make something beautiful. No questions? Yeah. Thank you and I at the end. Okay. Let's um, let's bring let's do Leah's statement now. Okay. And we'll end with the clues crew. Okay. I am also short, so. Uh, Leah Yellowbird apologizes. She lives up in Grand Rapids, and because of the snow and the weather, she just was not able to drive all the way down here. But I do have portions of her application and a bit of a statement of the, and there's Leah, a um, bit of statement of the work that she's working on right now. 
Leah is a painter and a beadwork artist, and she devotes her time full time to creating art. And painting is her primary medium, but she also tries a lot of new techniques, works in sculpture, mixed media, and fiber art, and brings uh, together beadwork, animals, and Ojibwe floral motifs with a pointillist style of painting. Her paintings and three-dimensional works are found in public and private collections all throughout Minnesota, including murals. Um, she created a mural for the Grand Rapids Arts, the Grand Rapids Area Library, and Bemidji State University, and was selected to design the tile floor for the St. Louis County Government Services Center. She is also working on a large 50-foot mural for the Blandin Foundation in Grand Rapids. Um, she was immediately, she says she was immediately struck by the goals of broadening the representation of history and identity of a place to include narratives and experiences that were previously absent. So she was interested in the placement of new works next to historically significant works by a well-known muralist and she wanted to take on that challenge and the responsibility that she would be able to propose and bring forward the identity of Native American people in the St. Paul region through her designs and her visual narrative. Um, she also works with traditional Ojibwe stories and symbolism, and her painting style brings that together with um, a contemporary sensibility and colors, which she wants to convey the presence and significance of Native American people both as a part of history as well as the present and future of St. Paul. And in the current piece she is working on, she is working on a design that includes inspiration from beadwork from an Ojibwe gentleman's leggings that were made for powwow at the turn of the 20th century. And her idea on this is to symbolize stepping forward through the use of the legging design. And she's also working with light and contemporary colors in this piece, again, to symbolize stepping forward and moving forward from the past, including through the colors and through the motifs. So she wants to thank everybody for including her with this project. She's really excited about it. She's working like mad and is nearly finished. Not to scare anybody, but she was so excited she dropped her other work and just went full bore on this project. So thank you very much. And then we have three people from Clues, four, seven. It's a, it's a collective, and we're really excited to see their work. Sure. I wanted, my name is Marina Castillo, and I'm a mental health therapist at American Indian Magnet School. Um, therapist by day, artist by night, is how I like to describe myself. I wanted to share something with you. Recently, Westside Community Organization sent out an email for the, the goings-ons on the West Side, right? And one of the photos that they included in this email was in the chambers with one of the pieces in the background, but everybody in the pews was Latino and, you know, people of color. And I, and I thought, so I've been asking a lot of questions on the West Side and in St. Paul, friends, people that I know, what would you like to see? And a lot of what they're saying is symbols. We want to see ourselves reflected in these murals. And I think we've worked really hard at, at what we're creating, which is really exciting. And I think across the board, people are saying the same thing. We want to see ourselves. At Ames, as you walk through the halls of American Indian Magnet School, you see all the different uh, faces on the walls. The students created these posters that says, "We are, we are here. We are still here," and it's it's so it's such a beautiful thing to see that it's um, that we're still here. So I wanted to share that with you because I thought that it's so important. It's such a shocking photo. Um, would you like to see <laughs> All right, good evening. Thank you for having us here today. Um, very honored to have been chosen to work on this project. My name is Samara Kuyun, and um, like Marina, um, I'm an artist by night or whenever I have a moment of time. 
um, but it's something that I've been doing for a lifetime now. Um, I'm also a museum educator over at the Historical Society, right in the History Center. Um, so I have to say that this is a project near and dear to my heart as well. And just to kind of go on to what uh, Marina was saying, uh, very often Latinx people here in the state of Minnesota are seen as an incoming, newer population. Uh, but what very few people actually know is that um, Latinx people, specifically Mexicanos, have been here for a very, very long time and have been part of the history of the state. And so, again, it's very important for us to see ourselves represented um, as community members in public spaces as well. Because if you can see it, then you can be it, right? And we want to make sure that our presence is known as well. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over now. Um, buenas noches. My name is Kai Herrera, and um, I'm originally from Belize, Central America, and unlike Mexicanos, we are recent um, <laughs> arrivals to this country. Um, I, um, just like these wonderful uh, compañeras here, I am also an artist by night. I work for the St. Paul Public School District. And my work centers a lot around um, social and environmental justice and uh, try to just bring awareness and open up conversations about race and uh, immigration and injustice um, and hopefully do that through, through my heart. So just a little bit about our group because we're working through a different process than a lot of the other artists that have been chosen. So we're actually a collective. Um, we belong to the Clues Latinx Muralism Apprenticeship Program. It's in its first year this year. Um, and so a group of us who are all practicing artists uh, were invited to learn how to become muralists and do, do public art because many of us, some of us have done public art, but I think some of us work in isolation. Um, so this has been a very interesting process. Um, so there are four of us that were chosen to be lead artists on this project, um, but definitely with the rest of our community behind us. And so um, we're holding meetings, um, the lead artists are holding meetings, and then we've also held several um, larger meetings uh, for the other apprentices to bring all of our ideas together. So it's all percolating at this moment, and we're hoping to with something amazing. Does anybody want to add to that? I think the neat thing is that the themes are very common. You know, like for myself, um, I'm Mexican. I grew up in California. And seeing my grandmother and my dad work the fields at a very young age, and seeing a lot of friends and neighbors and families, you know, you're driving by and you see them out in the fields. It was so important to bring that to the mural in a way that was respectful because to me, um, our ancestors, they got, well, I believe they guide us. This so was really important. And I think that every, every piece or every, each of the four artists has uh, put a part, I like to say a part of their heart into this because it's each piece is so significant to each of us. And the meetings that we've had have been so beautiful, a lot of tears, when we share what, why it's important to us to include these pieces. And then when we talk to the larger community, the larger groups, it's kind of the same, same um, themes are coming up. And so it's been really beautiful, uh, beautiful process. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll just say, for, for me, one of the most important things was, you know, I visualized my mother, my grandmother's hands that worked those fields in California. I visualized my dad's hands and many others. Um, I really wanted those, excuse me, I really wanted those hands represented as being um, part of what guides us and, is, and, help, and hold us up. Um, and our heart to be also a huge part of it, our Latino hearts. Um, and so we've done, I, th I think we've done an incredible job of incorporating some of those things. Um, yeah. Yes, the unseen labor in women. 
Um, that was the other thing. We really wanted to have a, a, a woman be a theme, be the central focus because we don't see ourselves in a lot of art out there. Men are incredible, men are great, but it, it, it's nice. We need to see ourselves out there because I think that would empower young girls. When, a lot of times in the schools when I've, I've held groups and I ask a young girl, what are you going to do when you grow up? What do you want? I don't know. It's like they're, it's not even in their thought process. I want them to see themselves and be like, I can do that? Absolutely. Being, being Mexican, I did not see myself as, a, as an educator. I'm a licensed teacher. And it wasn't until I was 26 years old that a professor in college said, you can do this. I can. Because all my teachers were white. And so I never saw myself, and I thought, oh, it's just white teachers that are, that are teachers. And so to become a teacher, then we need to see ourselves, because that's when we start to believe that we can do it. It's so important. This is your chance to ask questions. Those of you who I see here taking notes, um, you have an interest. I want to know more about the clues process. There's a little microphone for me. Thank you, Chris. Um, I want to know more about the clues process. I want to know more about Leah's process. I want to know more about your process over there. Emily. How's it going to work? Um, and then I want I want to be able to see pictures of that. So I hope you can take some photos along the way. So I think that there's going to be an element of that for everybody. But. I want to open the floor up for questions. Does anybody have any? Hi, I'm Nancy Wellington, and I'm one of the volunteer tour guides at the Ramsey County Courthouse, St. Paul City Hall, also at the depot, but that's not what we're talking about now. Um, I have a question. So it's been mentioned, and accurately, that the murals that are there are 80 years old, and of course they represent the time you know, when they were painted and when that. Um, to the artists, what would you anticipate as being the life expectancy, if you will, of your pieces? That's a very good question. Your closest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can only speak for myself. And I don't want to speak for any of the other artists up here. Um, but I see... I studied anthropology. Um, I'm an archaeologist by trade, and I see the evolution. That, I, I don't want to speak of evolution always as a move towards um, better and, and progress necessarily, but cultures change. Um, our perspectives change as history changes. Um, it depends on who's telling the history at any given point in time, who has the privilege in any given society at any particular time. Um, so I, I would love to see what we create last for generations and to inspire generations and tell our stories here in 2019 to future generations. But I would never want to um, have the ego to expect that this would always hold true for future generations, what myself and what others find to be important. Um, so I'm going to say for myself that I'm happy to see change in society over time, depending on what um, depending on what the people in a particular society see as being important from their perspective. So thank you. I agree with a lot of what you've said, and that's why I think, um, and we were talking about earlier today, the, the solutions that they come up with from the old murals and not totally taking them down and then displaying contemporary art with them so that it shows what was happening 80 years ago, as well as how it's reinterpreted or reinterpreting these themes now. And it, it would be interesting to see in 80 years from now what the next artist would put up and see this progression. Um, in regards to my work, I kind of do this old historical process with natural dyes, so I might be outdated earlier. <laughs> I will say this, uh, every one of these original pieces of art are going into our permanent collection of the Ramsey County Historical Society. So we will be able to pull them out forever, compare them, and judge them. <laughs> Anything else from Clues team on that one? 
All right. Oh, I have a question. <clears throat> this is about the artists, but also um, the historical society. What sort of documentation are you asking for from the artists along the way, if any? Well, we've asked them to participate in this process, so we have all that, which is good. Um, we're asking everybody to do as detailed of an artist statement as they can, because that's something that's lacking from the Norton pieces. We really don't know exactly what was in his head. We have his body of work and what people wrote about him and the little bits and pieces that we know more about him, but we don't know exactly what his intent was with this art. And so we're using the, you know, we're hoping that the, uh, the artist statements will help us with that context moving forward. But I'd love to give the artist a chance to speak on that too. We, we have had um, quite a few meetings with the four artists, Gustavo Lira, Aaron Johnson, Ortiz, myself, and Samara. And we have been able to express each part of this mural and the whys and, uh, you know, like I said earlier, what it means to each of us. And then when we've talked to the community, um, you know, the symbols, every little thing. You know, I could say it's done, because we have something that's amazing. But we're going to still keep talking to the community. Um, but yes, we do, we definitely have articulated what each piece means. And we're compiling sketches as well. We're compiling sketches as well to add, um, because people have said, you know, we'd like to see more people, and we definitely want that. As the process unfolds and you're documenting each step along the way, is there a pre-designated social media platform? Will you be able to keep the public updated on the progress and status of the work that you're creating? Um, you know, had Twitter been alive 80 years ago, I suspect we would have known what type of eggs he ate that morning, along with why he was creating the murals, such as the nature of the technology of the day. Uh, is there any plans to utilize technology in a, in, in a unified direction, such that the public can be more well informed about the creative process as it unfolds. I love that idea because there have been times where Aaron, Aaron has um, put it out to the community to attend some of the meetings, but Twitter, that would be a great mm -hmm. way to put that information because we start groups, you know, we have the Facebook group and the WhatsApp group and uh, whatever, but Twitter, I mean, hello. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Yes, we will be posting progress reports after the holidays um, up on our website and on Facebook. Um, and hopefully we'll start having sketches. I don't want to push the artists into publicizing anything until they are ready to share it because everybody's got their own process and there's a lot of steps in doing a project like this and until people are ready, um, then we'll start maybe putting some things up and our unveiling or receiving the artwork date is the first part of April. Um, and so right around then we will hopefully have some finished pieces and we'll certainly show those as well and then the process goes forward from there. Uh, about Facebook? Yeah, about about here. Here. Yeah. Are you Instagram live? I'm not currently. I, I don't have a Twitter account. But um, I think the part of the process is like I am so interested in your collective process and I like, would love to learn more about that. Um, I try to document as much of my process as possible just because colors change or in regards to like the natural pigments. Um, and right now I'm mostly researching, like making sure that what I want to depict as these motifs are accurate and represent the communities that are within St. Paul. And I think that's a really important part and expected of all of us. Peter has something to say. So I, I have a question I think is primarily probably for Chad, but 
I think is worth all of us thinking about. And that is that this is an issue that has not only arisen in St. Paul, uh, but in other parts of the country. Um, maybe we've, some of us have followed the San Francisco Washington High School case uh, most closely. But I'm, I'm wondering, is there a conversation that's going on nationally? Uh, is the, are there people in St. Paul who are on the point with this project in, in conversation with people in other cities in the country who are also wrestling with questions of memorials, monuments, and representation? That's a good question, Peter. Uh, it does speak to the national, quite frankly, international issues around art in public places. And this goes back well before the United States was even really a country. Um, there are looted artworks all over the world. The city of London has obelisks from Egypt. As a matter of fact, most of Europe does. Um, the Elgin Marbles. There's a lot of cultural appropriation that has happened in a very violent way throughout much of human history. This chapter now is different, because um, we're living in it. <laughs> this is not a distant thing in the past. So yes, there are people connected to the American Association for State and Local History, to the American Alliance of Museums, and any number of state organizations that are talking with each other. In terms of a unified effort, things are still a little sporadic on that. There are differences of opinions about how you handle all of these things. Do monuments that were established to exert white dominance during Reconstruction, uh, to bolster Jim Crow laws, belong in a museum? Should they stay up where they are with an explanatory plaque? Is there a different way to approach this? And each community is grappling with this. And I'm a little concerned about the idea of it being, coming up with one single solution nationally. I prefer to see this continue to be driven locally, but what people need are the tools to have the conversations. And that's something we're all learning. Okay? Museums have been for probably a decade now viewing themselves as places of community gathering. Some have for a lot longer, but honestly, for a lot of years, we were the experts. We knew the stuff, and we told you what to think about it. Um, hasn't really been my approach to this. I've been doing this for 20 years. There's a lot of folks like me out there. But the idea is the community needs to connect to it and come up with their way of understanding it. So I don't think you're going to see a single solution out there. And I don't think you'll ever see a community where everybody agrees on what was done. Uh, but yeah, there's more and more conversation and dialogue about this. I'm going to be in San Francisco in May. Uh, and I'm checking this out. The uh, I don't know where they are on that. I know it's been controversial. I've read some of the articles about it. It's, it's a challenging thing. That is, not, that is a particular case that is fairly close to this one in design, in terms of what it is. Uh, whereas the monuments issue around Confederate monuments is somewhat different. And the motivations for both were different. And I think that matters in how you address it moving forward. So, good question, Peter. Thank you. Other questions? It's really early. <laughs> Not a question so much as a comment. Um, of course, we don't know what was in John Norton's mind, but as a, one of the guys, I know a few of us, when we talk about those murals, try to point out that, of course, they were product of their time and the perspective of their time. Even though I'm white, as a woman, I am underrepresented in those murals, too. <laughs> so I know what you mean. Who is that a woman as a central figure? Wow, you mean I get to see myself there and not just hiding behind a man? <laughs> That's really cool. Um, but also, a couple things. One is that we sometimes see this as yeah, since they were people working, this is the, as we were really hitting the depths of the depression. And so this was hope. And so as you, as you, as you build your art, of course, the whole act of government and self-government and representative government is something in which we want to find hope. 
We want to hope that it can be better. We want to hope that our voices will be heard um, by those whom we elect you know, to do this work. And maybe there's some way to bring that hope into your artwork, you know, along with the representation. Absolutely, my gosh, we've got to see, you know, who are we who are doing this hoping? But I think that's a useful thing. The other thing that came out as a real epiphany for me in the first neighborhood meeting that we had here, Peter, when was that? That was several months ago. January. Almost a year ago now. Yes. Oh my. Uh, <laughs> Um, that I, I, you know, I'm not into graphic art, and, and so it simply had never occurred to me, and it's so obvious, a Native woman whose name I did not get because I was just, you know, not flat, said, art is also agenda. Well, of course. You know, you've talked about how we see what we see, and that's what we know, and that's what we start to believe. You know, what we see around us, we start to believe that that's the way it is. And I, if, if you don't see yourself in a teacher role, well, how can you be? You know, so as you, as you build your art, as you create your art, and, and it evolves, um, I, I think that's an important thing to keep in mind, too, that it's more than representation. It's, it's agenda for what we want to see as things unfold, even as... Um, he showed, Adam showed a, a, um, a picture of the industrial one. My gosh, there's a telephone pole in it. Really? Can we all have telephone poles? Yes, it's possible. So, hiding in these murals from 80 years ago is the hope that all this can happen for us. And so, you know, what is the agenda? Of course, it's more than telephone poles. but. Yeah, keep that in mind as well as artists that you are you will be telling school children, elderly, active government people, our elected officials, this is what we hope for, this is what we can be, this is what we can do, and this is our agenda, yeah, for for the future. Just in case anybody wasn't feeling enough pressure. <laughs> we got it all over. <laughs> Excellent. Are there any other questions for our artist folks or even the panel members? We have I'm one? just just thinking of this list of audiences. How about the people that come to the courthouse for the the justice, criminal justice in particular, in our community? Or don't they come there for criminal justice? No. Not to that room. Not they come to, to the room. building. The building. Not that room. But, not right. but there is uh, there is some things that there are times the community comes there in crisis or in distress yes. because the city council does a lot of times they'll have to rule on taking someone's home or some of those types of things. But the criminal justice system Different is places. up at the courthouse, up, up in the upper levels. But it is a time when people come in crisis or distress too. Thank you. Panel members may have questions too. Okay. They've done such a good job. They really have. <laughs> okay. So, if there are any more questions, what happens next? Uh, like I said earlier, the artists are going to go back and do some more work, and they're going to keep impressing us. Um, we will have another one of these at some point in the spring, I think. I think that's fine a few months from now. And I think we'll be able to look at some samples and sketches and see where people are. It'll be kind of, honestly, based on what people have told us, I think most of the work will be well on its way. Uh, April 8th is when we expect to have them done with an installation in May. So if you did as Peter asked and put your name and email down on the book over there, if you're a first timer right here, you will be kept in the loop on that. And I want to also point out the Eastside Freedom Library's Facebook page is a great place to catch these things. So, yes. I, would, I just wanted to let folks know, too, that uh, we've got another process going on down at the City Hall Courthouse that's trying to address some of the things that we've been talking about. The Kellogg Street Plaza right now is a big plaza. It's got a flagpole and some plantings. 
Um, Judge Cohen was a mayor, chief judge. He was a county commissioner in the 70s, 80s, 90s, but did a lot of work on equity work. I mean, in our community, he was one of the first to welcome the Hmong into our community. He helped establish the Council 18. He worked with the Native American community during the wounded knee things. He's done a lot of work and he's got a legacy here. And so um, it started to kind of memorialize Judge Cohen, but this whole work on the plaza has actually evolved much more than a memorialization of memory, a more memorial of one person. And it's really taken an approach about the community, a lot of things we're talking about. So I just want to let everybody know we've got another process going on down there at City Hall. Kind of to your point, that what's happening is in the city council chambers where the governance happens, where pre but this is like the entrance to our building, so when people come in, they're going to start seeing, and there's a process out there, I don't know if the artists are aware, I'm not exactly sure where we're in that process, but we've, we're handling it very similar. We've got a group of community folks that are sitting on a panel and reviewing what this plaza might look like and, and what, what it might represent, but then we're also taking it as an approach that it's going to not be just a static, the same for the next 50 years, that we're building this, that um, that it can evolve over time quicker than maybe the, our work in the council. So every five or six years you might add something or adjust or take or something in our community happen that you might want to actually recognize as part of that. So I just wanted to let everybody know that's occurring at the same time as the council chambers artwork. We tried to get Chad to run that one too, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes. And thank you, Commissioner. And that was very flattering, but um, <laughs> we're already, we're, we're jumping off into art with this one, and we have a lot happening at the Historical Society, so I appreciate you not holding it against us. No, no, that one. For, for, if you're familiar with Forecast, they're kind of managing that process for us. And they're a fantastic choice for that kind of thing. So, all right. Anything else? Or are we just wrapping up here in less than an hour? Oh, Nancy's got another one. If we're wrapping up, by golly, I would like to thank you artists. You know, like I said, I'm not into the graphic arts much. I don't get to hear from real life artists who are out there doing things that I cannot even imagine you know, for myself doing. Thank you so much for taking this on, for seeing what a, you know, a, a responsibility and opportunity you know, it is because it's we need it so much and I, I make sure to come to these meetings as much as I can so that I can tell people on my tours when it comes up this is what's happening yeah and I, I don't want to just say well yay, yay, yay. And no I know what the artists are doing now and it's amazing it's wonderful and thank you so much for doing it for taking it seriously and knowing what an impact you're going to have. Thank you so much for coming and talking to even a few of us. Um, this will reach further than you see. It's just really great of you to do that. I really appreciate it. I would like to add that if you're interested in seeing any of our work, like we all have Instagrams, you know, we're not gonna post that the murals or that yet, but mm -hmm. like for, for myself, I love, I'm a photographer, I've been a photo professional photographer for many years, and so when we enter clues, and all, right away I'm taking pictures of everything that we do, and I'll put it on my feed, so you'll be able to see some of the work that we're doing inside clues. The other day we were working on a mural, uh, um, it's going to be at, at the Y? And so they invited the community to come in and do the underpainting, I put a lot of photos on there, and I also put on my, my on my Facebook. So I like to document the process. So if you have any interest, you can see some of our work away from the mural. What's your Marina Castillo, artist on Instagram, and Marina Castillo art on Facebook. And we will put links to this. If the artists, if you haven't sent them to us already, please do. We'll get them on our Facebook page in the next week. You can see our styles. Yes. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. I don't have anything else, Robin. Again, I want to reiterate what Nancy said and thank all the artists for doing such a terrific job. It's been great to work with everybody. Very exciting. 
and to thank again our community panel who made the selection of the artists. They did a fantastic job. And I also want to give a little shout out to the city and to the county as well for instigating and working with us on this project. One thing that all the artists have expressed and I'm so honored and proud of is that there were no restrictions put on the artists. They could do what they wanted to, which is really rare for a public art piece. So um, I'm hoping that this serves as an example for other communities that may be in the same situation because I think the vision of the artist is going to be fantastic. So again, thank you all for coming and feel free to contact us if you have any other questions.